I think it's time I update you guys on what's in my street photography bag. Let's get into it. Most of the time, this is how it is. Just one lens, one camera, that's it. That's my street photography kit. Done. There's the video. Thank you for watching. See you next week. My other kit is when I go off somewhere cycling and that's when I need my bag. But in that bag, the two cameras I always go to is either the Canon A1, it's got the aperture priority. It's just such an easy camera to use. And my favorite lens to use at the moment is the 85mm f1.2 L. Look at that gorgeous bit of kit. Yes, guys, I will make a video on it. I will make the review on the 85mm f1.2. It's in the works. I'm actually filming it right now. For my digital street photography, it's mainly with the Fujifilm X100V. There you are. And as you can see, I've got the case. Oh, what's that case? Yes, it's the Govery's X100V leather case. And the last time I showed it on the channel, a lot of you guys were like, oh, that, oh, mine fell apart after like a few months. Well, I don't know what to tell you guys. Mine, I've been using this for over a year and mine's still in, like, it looks brand new, so nothing's coming apart. Everything's still, it looks perfectly fine. It looks like the day I bought it. It looks, so I don't know what you guys are doing with yours. Maybe you're throwing against the wall. I don't know. Next up on the cameras is this guy. The GoPro, it's a Hero 8 and I have it permanently attached to the chest mount because how else are you gonna get this sick POV shot? I'm not wearing it probably just for demonstration purposes. I really wish I used my GoPro a lot more than I do. Um, it's such a good camera, like the, everyone says the same thing about GoPros. They're incredible cameras, but we hardly ever use them. Battery pack, battery pack. This is an Anchor one. Uh, I don't know the name exactly. It is an essential. There's nothing worse than hitting the streets, you know, when you listen to your music, listening to some bangers, trying to make some bangers, and then your phone dies. That, I can't think of anything worse, to be honest. These are the Beats, I think called Power Beats Pro or something like that. Pretty expensive, not going to lie. Not gonna lie, they're quite expensive, but in my opinion, they are completely worth the price because Two things, all right? I want reliability, I want them to last, okay? So many times I bought cheaper headphones and they just constantly break. You know, the last pair of wireless headphones I had, I literally had gone through about six pairs of them. I'd rather just pay one price, one expensive bit of gear, and then it just lasts me, okay? I don't want, I hate replacing stuff. The battery on these is, in my opinion, great amazing eight hours you know i only ever use them at you know, maybe two hours at a time so eight hours is amazing the headphones themselves have about eight hours of battery life and then when you couple it with the battery you know the charging case it, you get about 24 hours of charge time i only need to charge these maybe once every two weeks at the most as soon as you take them out of the case they turn on and then when you put them on they automatically connect to your phone automatically. And then when you take one off, they pause, put it back on, it plays again. It's just, I don't know what Apple did, it just made things so much easier to use. And the reason why I went for wireless, even a cord was getting too much for me because usually the cord goes up around the back, but when during the winter you put on a coat, the coat, you know, the, the cord always gets stuck underneath the coat collar and then you just like messing about with it and then when you put it in your bag, it gets stuck underneath that. And then it's just, the cord just got really, really annoying. So now that I've gone completely cordless, I just can't go back. Possibly my favorite purchase of 2021 so far. And they're perfect for the gym as well. So I get a lot of use out of this. Beats sponsor me you know, change from last year, is that all of my cameras now have the Peak Design anchors. You know, everyone, you know, it took me a while to get on the train, but these are just so convenient. You put these anchors on all your cameras, I've got them on all my cameras, 
and I just have one camera strap. So this camera strap is from a company 595 and what's beautiful about this camera strap is that it's leather. Their leather, it's really really nice hallween leather. I know this leather is, this leather according to the experts, according to all the blogs, hallween leather, Chrome XL leather is like the good stuff. Uh, I know some of you leather um, connoisseurs be like, eh, genuine leathers, crap leather, meh. So this is Halloween Chrome XL leather. Apparently that's the good stuff. Um, and it wasn't too expensive, about 55 pounds. Um, I wish I'd gone for a longer one. You know, I really didn't like the P design um, camera straps because they look like, you know, they're kind of ugly. But this camera strap company, they've combined the P design anchors, but they make it with really nice leather, good quality straps. Um, so yeah, ideal. It's a bit short though, I wish I'd gone for a longer one. If you remember from my last video um, about my street photography, what's in my street photography bag from last year, you'll notice that I, before I used wrist straps and now I've changed to a neck strap. Why is that? Why have I made the change from wrist strap to neck strap? Well, simply because usually when I'm out about shooting street, sometimes I like to pop into a shop a supermarket for a quick nibble, a little snack, which means having it on, having the camera on your wrist whilst you're trying to pay for something, whilst you're trying to, you know, trying to buy food or something, it's just very inconvenient having this massive, just imagine having this on your wrist and you're trying to eat something or you're trying to pick, take something off the, you know, it's just, it's just not, it's just not a great idea. So having it on the neck strap, it allows you to go hands-free because you never know when you need to be hands-free out and about. Well, at least for me, and you never know when you need to be hands-free because you can just quickly sling it over your shoulder as well, hands-free. Or if you want to use it like a wrist strap, you just quickly do that. And now you're in wrist strap mode. And of course, some other stuff that every street photography bag should have is some some fancy hand sanitizer. Whenever I'm out with the boys, Leo and Ribs, they absolutely love using my little fancy hand sanitizer. Don't lie, I know you guys love it. Film. So what film do I use now for my street photography? All of it, pretty much 99% of it. I did shoot a few rolls of Fuji Superior 400, um, but 99% of my, of all my street photography nowadays is with this guy, Porter 160. I need reliability, I need consistency. You know, I'm, I'm done with experimenting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I'm very much laser focused on trying to create consistency, trying to create like a consistent narrative and, you know, a real body of work. Um, and in order to do that, you need to have consistent colors, a consistent color palette. Uh, so that means you need to be shooting with one film stop, really. Um, and with Portrait 160, it's slow because, uh, which is a good thing because you know I shoot with most of the time I shoot. I like to shoot near wide open in daylight because it's a professional grade sort of film stock. It gives me that sharpness I want, and it gives me that dynamic range I want. And I've used it long enough now. Use I've shot predominantly Portrait 160 for almost 18 months now. I get the colors that I want with Portrait 60, I'm getting the colors I want with it consistently enough. So that's why I don't shoot anything else really in terms of my color work. It used to be Fuji Pro 400H, Portrait 160, but we all know what happened to Fuji Pro 400H. Okay, we won't talk about it. What else have I got? What else have I got? This stuff. These are lens cap covers from Covered. Um, I like them because it adds, because as you can see, as you can see, this is not a photography bag. So it just, it's just got, it doesn't have any sort of those compartments, padded compartments. So I like to add a, you know, as much protection as possible to my cameras. And this silicone lens cap cover, it sort of helps against shock, um, you know, gets knocks and bumps, and it sort of protects it against dust as well. Why don't I have a an actual photography bag, you know, a photo-centric bag. And the truth is, this bag holds so much, despite it being so small, I can fit 
all of it, I can fit my entire street photography sort of kit and still have plenty of space for more accessories, some clothes, even some groceries in this bag at the same time. It's hard to believe because it's so small, but it generally does. You know, it's a very, very nice looking bag. And on top of that, it has these two top handles, which makes it very convenient for traveling with, because when you're on the tube in London, one of the things that you have to do, if you don't do it, you're probably a tourist. When you're on a crowded tube, you need to take your bag off and keep it and hold it between your legs. And having this little top handle turns into like a little briefcase. It makes it very easy to carry when you're moving, when you're on public transport or just, you know, it just makes it very convenient. This is, these are also new. Look at these pins. Um, I can't remember the name of the company. But look at this, look, it's the Canon A1. Oh, it's a Fuji X100V. The Leica M6 with the cheeseburger on it. If you follow Trevor Wise Cup, you'll, you'll understand the reference. Anyways guys, that's about it. I really don't carry much. Usually it's just one camera, one lens, one roll of film, and a camera strap, and this is my street photography kit. This is it. But if I do cycle to a spot to go take some photos, then that will be it. One camera, maybe a GoPro, backpack, water bottle, that's it. And another roll of film, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that guys. Follow me on Instagram at Zane Reads a Photo. And with all that said and done, boys and girls, oh yeah, subscribe if you have not already. With all that said and done, boys and girls, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.